Hello viewers, welcome back to the course. So today we are going to deal with the lecture number 15. So in the previous lecture we have discussed about the neutral absent methods for uh, system of equation. Now in this uh, lecture we will discuss about that how we can find the complex root. of a equation that is my f z equal to 0. So, suppose my equation is this one f z where I can write my z is equal to x plus i y. So, my z is the complex number and suppose I have the equation of this type. So, for example, I have my f z is equal to maybe z square or I have this is equal to e raised to power z. So, this type of equation suppose I want to solve for example, I can write my f is equal to x plus i y and then suppose I have z square. So, that is equal to x plus i y whole square. So, I can expand this one as x square plus i y square plus 2 x y i and based on this one I can write my x square minus y square. So, this is the real part and then I can write my i 2 x y. So, that is my f z in this case and this is equal to 0. Now, suppose I take the real and imaginary part. So, from here I will get my x square minus y square equal to 0 and 2 x y equal to 0. So, based on this one if you see from here then I can write this equation as a function a new function. So, maybe I can uh, <coughs> I can write uh, this as a capital F and this is also capital F. Okay. So, this is I can write as a capital F. So, this that is capital F, capital F and then this is I can write as a small f. So, I get this equation f x y equal to 0 and from here I can write my g x y equal to 0. So, what is this? It is just the system of simultaneous system of equations and in the previous lecture we discussed that how we can find the root of a system of equation. So, based on this one I will find the root of this equation and I will substitute the value here and then I will get the roots for f z. So, based on this one I am able to find my value of x plus i y. So, I will get the value of x y which is satisfying this relation, I will get the value of x y which is satisfying this relation and I will substitute it back. So, I will get the value of x and y such that I am getting this equal to 0. So, that is the way we can solve the system of equation. So, and we know from the theory of complex analysis that any function may be it, it is an analytic function, I can write this function always in the form of f x y plus i g x y. So, based on this that I can always write a function in this form then we can put this equal to 0 and then we can solve this equation from here I will get the system of simultaneous equation this equal to 0 and g x y equal to 0. And using the Newton Epsilon method for system of equations we can solve this system and based on this one we can solve this value of this. So, that is how we can find the complex root of the equation f z equal to 0. So, this is uh, all about that how we can use the Newton epsilon methods for finding the complex roots. Now, let us start doing the code that how we can make the code for whatever the method we have discussed because in the previous uh, classes uh, we have just uh, taken the bisection method, we have coded the bisection method using the MATLAB code. Now, we will uh, make the codes for maybe fixed point method or regular falsy method or secant method or Newton Epson method. 
So let us write the code for this one and go to the MATLAB command. So if you remember then in the previous lectures we have discussed the bisection method and we have called this bisection method from the file this one and so I will go back to this open. and I will go to the directory which we have created last time. So, this is a MATLAB code for scientific computing. So, in that case we have started this code. So, now this is the code we have started with and I suppose I run this code change folder and then based on this one I got the solution. So, in the previous lecture we have started with this one. So, bisection method gives you the solution with the 19 iteration and that is my initial guess a is equal to minus 2 and b is equal to minus 1 and based on this one I get the value of the root negative root and that is minus 1.86388. So, that is the way we can find the root for this one. Now, today we are going to start with the another method. So, let us start with the new file this one and Today we are going to do for the fixed point methods. So, let us write the function and suppose I will today I will get the root. Um, so, I will get root then f root the value of the f at the root then number of iterations and I am introducing the new uh, argument here and that is the x list. x list means that in the previous class we have discussed that how we can find the order of the convergence of the method. So, but to find the order of the convergence of the method I need e n, e n minus 1 and e n plus 1. So, 3 values the error at the 3 points I needed. So, I will introduce this one in the in this lecture. So, that is the output I want and that is equal to. So, I will write that fixed point. So, this is the fixed point method I am going to get. So, what I need to do? I will pass the f value, then I will pass g, then I will pass dg, then initial guess and then the tolerance. So, what is my f? f is the equation I am going to get the roots. g is the function we are going to write as so I can write that here that f x equal to 0. So, this is the x is the root is a root. So, fixed point means I need x is equal to g x. So, this I need to find. So, I will convert this function into the x into g x form. So, that is my g x. Now, I also know for the convergence, convergence I need the modulus value of derivative of g at initial guess. So, this is my suppose initial guess. So, that should be less than 1 because we know that only then the iteration iterative methods because fixed point method is iterative method. So, in that case the the iterative method will converge. So, in that case, so this is my dg, dg means the derivative of g. So, that I will pass out and then a is the initial guess, a is the initial guess and then and from here I know that TOL tolerance is the tolerance. tolerance. So, based on this one I can find the now what I do is that I find define maximum ITR. So, I just define maximum ITR that I should not get my function to be iterated more than 100 times. Now, what I do is that that now if 
my dg whatever the function I am getting the value of this function at a because see from here I just want to clarify that in the earlier I, I can find evaluate f evaluate at a the function dg at a. So, this can be written written as you find dg because dg is the function we are passing and then I can write a only. So, that way also it will work. So, I will put if dg is greater than 1 suppose the value is coming 1 then I can write from here display. So, from here I, I can find the value of display that for the given a the modulus value g dash at a the modulus value is greater than 1. So, d it will treat this as a comma here. So, I will write instead of this I will write d g at a is greater than 1. So, may not converge. that is it. So, this is the comment we are writing here and then from here I will write return and then end. So, this will happen whatever the methods uh, the initial condition I am passing I will check the value of this one. So, if this is not true then I will put my itr is equal to 0 I will put my x list x list is the value of the value of the uh, roots at the each iteration. So, let us at one first iteration its value is equal to a. So, whatever the initial guess I am giving. So, that value will be saved in the x list at the first position. Now, from here I can write that f print f. So, that is the uh, print f I can define and then I can define the initial guess. So, start with the new line initial guess. So, I can give the value of a that is equal to maybe I can write 7 m percent with this uh, percentage sign and then I can define 7.6 f then I can give my d g at the value of a. So, that is also same as equal to percent 7.6 f then after this the new line. So, I will write this and then I will pass the value of a and d g at a. So, this value will be represented here. Now, what I do is that so my let us uh, because the so this is my iterative method. Iterative method is x n plus 1 is equal to g of x n. So, I will give the value of x n I will get the new value of x. So, in this case so let us I get a a new that is equal to the g I pass and this is equal to g a. So, this is I have found this value. Now, I will start my while loop. So, while a b absolute value of the value of f at a nu. So, that is the value of f at a nu is suppose greater than tolerance because I know that if the we are going close to the root the value of f at the root will be 0. 
so it close to 0 so I am getting that its value is greater than if it is greater than the given tolerance you can so then I will should go inside the loop and in this case I will type that if if my ITR the number of iteration the max ITR the maximum number of iteration is less than equal to ITR. So, in this it may happen that my iteration is keep going. So, if I say that my iteration is greater than equal to max ITR then I should say that ok stop here. So, I can write f print f and then from here I can say that or I can display maximum number of iterations reached. So, it, it will show that maximum number of iteration reached and then it will break the program and then end. So, it will come out of the program. Otherwise, what it should be done? It should find my a old is equal to a new. So, my a new should now go to the a old, then my a new should be g of a old. Now, it should get the value of, so I am putting my method value at a old at the g and then getting the new value. Now, I will write my itr is equal to itr plus 1 because it is incremented by 1 and then from here I can maybe show what is my error. So, I can write my error absolute error if it is needed then a new minus a old and then from here I can write my app print f so from here I can write that at iteration itr is equal to percent d my a is this one. So, I can write my a 6.6 f or maybe 7 I should write here 7 also the same uniformity we should keep here and then d g the value of the value of here I want my f at a. So, value of the error at a So, from here I can write my f at a new. So, this is the value I am getting at my a. So, what is the value of that? And then I will put the end to this while loop and based on this one my f a new that becomes value of the f at a new. So, that is the way we can find from so now my I can write here root. So root will be my a new. So that will be the root because a new becomes a old and after that I will put my iterative method and from this method I will get the value of the a new. So my a new will be there. So if it come out from this loop I will put this a new as a root of the equation and this is my I can write as f root. So, value the function at the root. So, that is the way we can define and from here I can also uh, one thing I also want to put here x list 
at ITR plus 1. So, that is I want to point A nu because I am also starting with 1 from here. So, that is why I am putting 1 because here it is starting from 0 it is 1. So, when it will be 1 it should be 2. So, that I am saving here. Now, I can save this code here fix point and then this is saved. Now, this is saved. So, now I want to do the calculation open the main program. So, let us uh, the open main program and in the main program also we have to uh, do some calculations. So, that we should get the, so this is a, I am writing the same main program. So, clear all CLC and this is the function last time we have taken. Maybe I can comment this and I will start with the new value or the new equation. So, in this case for the fixed point, so let us define f. So, f I am taking x raised to power cube minus 2 star x minus 8. So, that is I am finding, defining the function here and I am defining x exact. So, this is the value of the exact root for this equation. So, that is suppose I am taking 2.331. This is also approximate value of this root I am defining here. Now, I have to find out what is the g because in the fixed point I need to find the value of g. So, g if you see we have done the same type of things in the lecture. So, and we found that if I take the g is equal to 2 star x plus 8. So, that is this value raised to power 1 by 3. Then in that case my value of the g will be less than 1. So, my dg will be So, from here I will get the value of dg. So, this will be 1 by 3 star 2 star x plus 8. So, that is the value we are getting raised to power 2 by 3. So, this is the derivative of the g I am getting. <coughs> okay. Now, in this case if I start with a is equal to suppose 1 and the tolerance I am giving you that is 0 0.5 into e uh, minus 5. So, let us take this one. So, that is the tolerance I am giving. Now, let us start finding the calling the function. So, I will find my root here f root then itr iterations and x list. So, this is the argument I want from the function and I am writing fixed point p t. So, that was the function I was calling. So, now imagine f is this g is this. So, f g and d g f g d g a and tolerance. So, this is the function I am calling from here I will just save this one. Now, what I want I want to find the error. So, error will be e is equal to absolute value I am taking x list. So, this is the x list minus x exact. So, it will give you the value of e the error at each iteration. Now, I will get my q that is the 
factor I am finding. So, my q is equal to I am defining as zeros the length because I need three points always to find out the, the order of the convergence or the rate of the convergence. So, I will define my length of E. So, whatever the length is there minus 2 okay, and this one. So, that is the rows and the column. So, one column and the row. It means I am defining a column vector with all value 0 whose dimension is length of E, whatever the length of E is here minus 2. Now, I am finding my Q and minus 1. So, that is the value I am getting and from here if you see from the previous lectures that I need to find this log. So, log means natural log I am taking E n plus 1. So, that is the E n plus 1 divided by E n. So, this is the value we are getting this one. So, log E n plus 1 by E n and then divided by log E n divided by E n minus 1. this one and here I have to put one more bracket that is the bracket we are getting. Now, I want to uh, uh, plot these functions in the in the given program. So, I will write now from here I will define for i is equal to 1 to length of q. So, this is the length of q because I have gotten this value of the q here. So, this value I am getting then I will write f f print f the rate of convergence is. So, that is equal to I can write 4.2 maybe f, then I can write my new line and then I can define q i this one and then I can define the end. So, by this way we can define this function and that is my exact rule. So, let us uh, run this code and let us see that what is the error here. So, it is showing that the undefined function or variable x 8 in the main program this one. Okay, okay. So, we should this is a bisection program. So, I do not want to keep this program. Maybe I will this is my main program. So, that is the function and this is 2 x minus 8. So, that is the function we have defined 2 x plus 8 not minus plus 8. So, 2 x plus 8 that is the function we have defined. So, let us see now again there is some error. Now, it is showing undivided function or variable n. Okay. So, here see from here initial guess is a is equal to 1 and the value of d at d g the derivative g at 1 is 0 0.01. So, in that case we okay, will going to get the root of the equation. Okay. So, that is the value of a the root we are heading toward. So, this is my fixed point method we have defined. So, let us see that why it is not giving the so value of d g ok ok at iteration. So, I have to put i t r here then the value of a and then the value of f nu and this one. So, that is the 
error here. So, I have saved this one. Now, we will write the okay, from here 4. Two. So, this is length of E minus 1. So, this is the value we have taken because this is the value of length. So, I will write my for loop and is starting from 2 to length of E minus 1 and that is at. So, now let us see. So, that is my So, now it is running and that is the final solution. So, from here you can see that I will start it with my initial guess that is 1 and at that place that value of the dg was less than 1. So, it is going to converge. So, then I will get my value of a is this value of the f a is this. So, with the iteration after the same iteration I will get the value of a that is 2.3307 and the value of the function. So, this is the value of the function. I am not putting the absolute value. So, it is 0 0.00001. So, it is up to the tolerance. So, it is becoming less than the tolerance and the rate of convergence is I started with the initial guess. So, it will be showing 0 0.49, then there is 0 0.48, 0 0.42, 0 0.19, then 0 0.13, then 0 0.12. So, in this case my rate of convergence is always coming less than 1 because it cannot be greater than 1. So, this is the way we found the rate of convergence. Because we know that in the fixed point methods, our rate of convergence is always unique means uh, is the linear the one. So, it may happen that sometime we will get the rate of convergence depending upon the value of that what is the value of g a. So, based on the value of this g a, we can find the rate of convergence. So, in this case my rate of convergence is coming 0 0.12. So, maybe in the next class we will go for the other methods. So, this is the fixed point method. In the next class we will go for the regular fallacy and the Newton epsilon method. So, thanks for viewing. Thanks very much.